Okay, so we're on 2019 FRQ number four here. This is a cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet contains collected rainwater as shown in the figure above. The water drains out through a valve not shown on the bottom of the barrel. So the water is coming out from here, right? So remember what this is saying is as water is going down, the only thing that's changing is the height. The radius is still gonna remain one foot no matter where you are, right? As you're going down, your radius is still one foot. The only thing that's changing is your height. Okay, so that's a key point here. All right. So um, the rate is modeled by dh dt equals negative one tenth root t root h, where h is measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. The volume of the cylinder is uh, pi r squared times height. Find the rate of change of the volume in the barrel with respect to time with, when the height of the water is four feet. Indicate the unit of measure. All right, so remember our radius is constant here. So in part A, We'll start with my volume. Volume is pi r squared h. And again, reminding yourself that r is one because this is constant. I can actually already put it in there so I can get rid of one of the variables, right? So if you put it in there, you get one squared times that, you get pi h. So now you can take the derivative because it's a related rate. So it's trying to find the rate of um, the volume changing with respect to time. So you get dv over dt equals pi dh over dt. Now, dh over dt, um, we know because it has a formula here and we're looking at it when the height is four feet. So dh dt when h equals four is negative one tenth root four. So negative two over 10, negative one fifth. So the vo volume is changing at pi times negative one fifth. So it's changing at negative pi over five. And then don't forget, this is how much is it changes feet, right? So cubic feet, because it's a volume per, per what, how, what is the time measured in? It's in seconds. So negative pi over five cubic feet per second is how fast the volume is changing. Okay. Part B, when the height of the water is three feet, is the rate of change of the height of the water with respect to time increasing or decreasing? Explain your reasoning. So when we're looking for the increasing or decreasing. So that's the derivative of what we're looking at. So we're looking at the rate of change of height. So we're looking at dh dt, the rate of this. So that means we're taking the prime of that. So we're gonna take another derivative. So we're really looking at d squared h over dt squared. We're looking at a second derivative of this um, rate of change of height, all right? So your dh dt is defined as negative one over 10 root h, right? So in other words, this is h prime. h prime equals negative 110 root h. What's h double prime? Because we're looking at the rate at which this rate is changing. So we got to look at double prime. So for the second derivative, we're looking at h double prime. Take your constant negative 110. Now take the derivative of h. You get 1 half times h to the negative 1 half. And don't forget h itself has an h prime because this is uh, implicit differentiation in a sense. So let's clean up a little bit. I get negative 1 over 20 times one over root h times h prime, so negative 110 root h. And this is very interesting because you get one over 200 and then the root h's actually reduce each other out. So your second derivative is always gonna be one over 200. It is always positive, right? Therefore, it is always increasing because this is a positive value. All right, that's it. Part C, at t equals zero seconds, the height of water is five feet. Use separation variables to find an expression for h in terms of t. So this initial condition of t equals zero, h equals five is gonna be handy in a minute. All right, so let's look at our original function of dh over dt equals negative 110 root h. Okay, separation variable, right? So move the h to the left, move the dt over. So you get dh over root h equals negative 110 dt. I strongly recommend you rewriting this as h to negative one half dh equals negative 110 dt. Now take the integral. All right, so you get h to the positive one half, don't forget to multiply by the reciprocal, equals negative 110t plus c. This is where we plug in our initial value. So 2 times root h root 5, right, is equal to negative 110 times zero plus c. So that actually is really nice because two root five is equal to c. So now we're gonna take that and plug it back into this equation. So 
2 root h equals negative 1 over 10 t plus 2 root 5. Okay? All right, so first thing I would do is get rid of the 2, right? Because I'm trying to solve for h. You're trying to write your equation solving for h. So divide everybody by 2. Okay. So that gives me root h equals negative t over 20 plus root 5. Okay. And then so last thing you want to get rid of is the root. So square both sides. So your h is defined as root 5 minus t over 20. I just like that positive to be front. You don't have to. You can put the negative t over 20 in the front squared. And you don't have to multiply the whole thing out. You can actually leave it as is. Okay. That's it for this problem.